My name is Lynn Nguyen and I'm the Young Adult Librarian from the Chinatown Branch Library with the Los Angeles Public Library. I'm here to welcome you to today's Big Read program with our special guest, Cynthia Tai. We recognize and acknowledge the first people of this land, honor their elders, past and present, and the descendants who are citizens of these nations. For more information on which territory you may reside on, check out native-land.ca. We would also like to recognize the ongoing refugee crisis. For more information, check out rescue.org slash topic slash refugee dash crisis. We'd like to thank the National Endowment for the Arts Big Read, a partnership with the Arts Midwest, Department of Cultural Affairs, the National Endowment for the Humanities, the Lenore S. and Bernard A. Greenberg Fund, the Library Foundation, and the behind the scenes staff for helping bring this program to you virtually. In addition, we would also like to thank the Friends of the Chinatown Library for supporting our Big Read program series. If you would like to see more amazing programs, please visit our online calendar at lapl.org slash events. Our website also has blog posts and video links that highlight the library's diverse resources and upcoming programs. Participants at today's program will have a chance to win a free copy of The Best We Can Do. So please email bigread at lepl.org to receive the link to the survey to be entered into the opportunity drawing to win a free copy of The Best We Can Do by T. Booty. You can also scan the QR code on the screen to access the survey. You'll see that coming up. <laughs> If during this program you're finding that you're having a difficult time, please contact the Los Angeles County Emotional Warm Line here at 800-854-7771. Again, that's 800-854-7771. And they're available from 1030 a.m. to 9 p.m. daily. And now on to today's program. Cynthia Tai Zuan Zuan is a Vietnamese American singer and community activist. Tai was an active member in the Boat People Memorial, um, where it's located in Westminster, California. As a second generation Vietnamese American, she is proud of the struggles, successes, and sacrifices of the Vietnamese American community. And she is a proud new mother. So now let's welcome to this a virtual stage, Cynthia Tai Zuan Zuan. Here we go. Hi, Cynthia. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, goodness. How are you? How are you? Okay, good. It's so good to have you here. And I just want to thank you for taking the time um, to, you know, be with us here with the Los Angeles Public Library and to share a little bit about your life um, and hopefully uh, your, your, sh uh, share with us all of the things that you've been doing to uh, support the Vietnamese American community. So um, I just want to put it out there for everyone. Cynthia and I have been friends for almost 20 years. <laughs> it's been a very long time. Yeah. Oh, you'll see Cynthia's um, Instagram handle down below if you guys want to give her a, a follow. She's right there. Um, so, Cynthia, um, you know, today we're here to talk about what it's like to be a second generation of Vietnamese American. Um, just to get some insight, were you born here or were you born in Vietnam? I was born here, actually. Um, my parents came here in 1979 and um, yeah, by boat. And it was a crazy life-changing experience for them like coming over here you know like not being able to speak english not having a job not having money just to like start from scratch so i you know we'll get into like more details about that like our parents yeah. struggle and stuff, but, yeah. yeah oh my god just just you say talking about them already getting like you know, goosebumps because it's so it's so hard to to talk about. Um, but it 
it happens. So yeah, um, just to get, I guess, just to get an idea then, of, did your parents ever tell you the story, like specifics on how they you came know, to America? Yeah, yeah. So the funny thing is like when I was younger, the only thing I knew was, okay, they came over here by a boat. Like I didn't even know the size of the boat or, you know, what they had to go through to mm -hmm. be able to get onto that boat to just leave mm -hmm. everything behind. So as I got yeah. older, I started asking my parents more about it. And mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like it's not easy just asking them what they've been through either. Because I don't want to trigger anything that, you know, might make them really sad and stuff like that. So as I got older, it was a little easier for them to open up to me and like tell me exactly what it was like, like leaving, mm -hmm. and starting everything yeah. over here in the U.S. Yeah, no, I, I bet. Um, did your what did your parents do when they lived in Vietnam? What was their life like? Did they ever share that with you? Yeah, so my mom was a teacher, and my dad was like um, a soldier. So he would the, the the funny story is like I always ask like how did you guys meet and stuff like that, and then they started telling me I was like wow it's kind of like the Vietnamese version of the Notebook, you know what I mean? But he would just be come back from. Um, war or whatever and he would just be hanging out with his friends in the, the little jeep and he just sees this girl walking down the street and he's like telling mm -hmm. his friends like okay i'm gonna go get her number and then his friend's like yeah right do you even know who that is because my grandmother was pretty well known in that little town so he was like no but i'm just gonna go shoot my shot you know kind of thing and then yeah like randomly he was his he got a, my mom went to the movie theater and he got a ticket somehow right next to her it was like random mm -hmm. And then yeah. that's how he's talking to her and like meeting her and yeah, and then yeah. everything goes from here. <laughs> that is so awesome. <laughs> well, um, you know, did, did did and then of course when the war did happen, the Vietnam War, did they ever talk about the actual war and what they had to go through, um, what they had to Not, endure while the war was happening? Yeah, like little not like in very specific details, but uh -huh. I would hear my mom tell me that, yeah, everything was just taken away from them. And they only had an X amount of time to leave everything behind. Everything that my grandmother worked hard for her entire life, like they just had to leave everything. And when they had the opportunity to um, buy a boat ticket to leave, mm -hmm. my grandmother was like, okay, we're just gonna have to leave everything here because. There's, we can't stay here anymore. So that's when my grandmother went to borrow money to get a boat ticket for our whole family and some of my dad's side of the family. And from there, they just, yeah, left everything. And mm -hmm. the sad thing was that a couple of days before they left, my grandfather passed away. So my grandmother only had a certain amount of time, yeah, to plan like a quick funeral for my grandfather's, you know, like, what do you do? It was like, do we bring his body with like, there's not much of a choice, but mm -hmm. that's what they had to do. So yeah, they buried him and then they, they left. Wow. Crazy. It's just whatever on their backs. So I'm not talking about, you know, like us leaving and being able to pack everything, like just the most valuable things. And then mm -hmm. when my parents came here, some of their friends were able to have a couple of their wedding photos still that they were able to bring with them. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, some of the stuff, it's like they didn't think about at the time to bring. So mm -hmm. it's crazy how, yeah. what they went through. I can't even imagine. Yeah, like, I don't even, do you think we would even be able to survive? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> you, think about, you think about like our parents and, and like, you know, your parents, like how, how do you just, pick up in the middle of, of your life and just hop on a boat and you never see yeah. your home and again. God knows where we're going to go on the boat, right? It's not like the boats today where there's, you know, there's it's monitoring. Like a ship. Yeah, it's, it's like a big ship. It's, it's, yeah, it's like a little boat and then it's like a couple hundred people would fit on there. Like I, I'm sure you've seen images of how compact everyone is. Like when my, when I asked my family, like, how were you guys on the boat? And so all like the elders would have a better seat, of course, right? Versus yeah. the young males. So the males would just be walking around all day. And God knows for how many days that you're on the ship for. 
so yeah, it's be, it's it's so sad. And yeah, for my parents, it's like there were people dying on the boat too. And to have kids like my brothers seeing that, it's traumatizing. I'm sure. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Very. Um, how many how many older siblings do you have? Is it I just one two brother? Older brother. Two, two older, older brothers. Brother. Were they were yeah. they both born in Vietnam? Yes. So oh, I think okay. they were like ten and seven, maybe when they were okay. leaving with my parents. Yeah. So they were pretty yeah. young, but I feel like at that age you can still witness and remember some things, you know? Yeah. So absolutely, absolutely, it's like traumatizing. Um, I remember my mom would, you know, when I was a kid, I would, you know, I didn't know any better, but I would, I would ask my mom like, oh, like. What did you see on a boat? <laughs> like, what did you see when you were coming? And she would tell me like there were pirates, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember being a kid, um, and I'm I'm like you know seven eight years old asking my mom like pirates like the ones you see in the the, the storybooks you know but no she's like no they're like violent people coming right. onto the boats to steal things right. and exactly. and and you know I hate to say this but to also kidnap women. Of course. Take, yeah. yeah. So it's it's really it's hard because you hear about these things. You're like, wait a minute, what? Like my parents went through this. So yeah. yeah. It is. Um you know, so yeah, so after they came to um America, like did, did how did did they well first did they go to a refugee camp in another country? So from their from when their boat was um capsized, they went to Hong Kong. So they lived in Hong Kong for a little bit. And then from there, they came to, to America. Mm -hmm. And um, when they came here, of course, you know, not knowing any English whatsoever, they were lucky enough to have some friends here that mm -hmm. could help them. And then so I remember like my mom's first job, like she worked um, at a nail salon. And <laughs> my dad would go would work at LAX, picking up, uh -huh. you know, like those that people like put a quarter in and then they use it to put the luggages on oh uh, yeah yeah rental like carts so you know some people just rent the carts and they don't put it back so my dad would go collect them and to him that's the money that he's making from collecting the carts back yeah. so that's one of like his first jobs and then he went to school um study printing and then that's when he got into the newspaper business wow oh man i i we're definitely gonna have to talk about that because um you know, your parents, did they start at the Saigon Times. Yes. Right? So your dad, for him to go to school and learn about printing, like, how, like what idea transpired? Like, why did he decide uh, to start the Saigon Times? And, well, and Vietnam, was it difficult? Really loved, well, in Vietnam, he was already, like, a journalist. So that was, like, always something that he loved doing. And then so when he came here, he's there wasn't that many Vietnamese people yet. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, oh, maybe we should start a newspaper. And um, so they started it in our garage. And then no it was way. like something small. <laughs> yeah, something small. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Look at me. Oh, man. Look at yeah. you. You are just so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so we did something small. Like, they started off something small, and they would – my dad would do the writing and then we would send it out to print. And then on weekends, I would go with my parents to go deliver the newspapers to, you know, all the businesses that advertised with us at the time. Mm -hmm. So it was like a hard working job for them because not only that he has to write everything on the weekends, like, okay, we got to go drive to all these places to deliver the newspaper because we don't have enough money to hire someone to go mm -hmm. do that for us at the time. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, that was like my memory of us and in the van, there was like a picture of like me with my parents. And then my dad was like feeding me in the bottle in the back of our van while like dropping off newspapers. Cause you know, no one else can really watch me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. But before yeah. they did the newspaper, we also owned a restaurant. They owned a no small way. restaurant in Chinatown. Yes, in Chinatown, right Here, by Dodger State. In Chinatown? In yeah. <laughs> was it a Vietnamese it restaurant? Awesome. Yeah, it was like a Vietnamese restaurant. And then at the time, um, all these like, uh, Vietnamese singers back in the day would come and hang out there because there wasn't that many Vietnamese restaurants back then, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so they would hang out there and then they would like sing, of course, Asians love singing. 
<laughs> so it would be like a place for to get together and hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was it was nice. And from there, then they started the newspaper. But they they were in the restaurant business for like a like not that long, but for a couple of years. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, geez. So so okay. So they did the Vietnamese restaurant, and then they started the newspaper business. And how long would you say it took for the business to like really pick up? Um, because your 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 parents' business it's still in business till this day. Right. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think maybe for them, maybe because they started it like in the late eighties, but I think mm -hmm. maybe early nineties was when the newspaper started picking up, and mm -hmm. then that's when I feel like more of the Asian community started um becoming bigger around our area in like the six to six area so mm -hmm. you know more people read newspapers and um at the time there's no internet so the newspaper was like the thing to do right <laughs> not like us right now like on our phone or mm -hmm. everything is like quick news but back then it's just like the newspaper so everything and anything that they wanted to know about our community or about the world would be from the newspaper so i think in the, like the mid '90s was when our newspaper become became like really popular mm -hmm. in the LA County area. Well, that's awesome. Um, how, what? How does your dad decide, or does your dad have like an editor, or is he the editor that decides he what story? Oh, he's the we as well, but he would make sure everything you know is like written correctly, and then everything mm -hmm. is stated correctly because you know it's like his baby kind of thing. Yeah, he wants yeah, to for sure. Everything, make sure everything is done the right way so uh -huh. i mean he's still doing it till this day and he's in his 80s so yeah to me um, it's great that he's still enjoying what he's doing and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it makes him happy doing it that's awesome i can't believe he's still uh, i just want to show everybody what the saigon times look like oh, yeah. here we go <laughs> that's my daughter. this is cynthia's daughter emma rose <laughs> and uh, yeah, if you guys picked up um, this newspaper, this is called, um, okay, this is Sung, this Sung means like spring. So this is like the spring right. article. So that comes out every um, lunar near you, like they, then we have like a special magazine that we mm -hmm. come out, but our newspaper comes out every Friday, but that's like oh. a special, a special edition magazine. So yeah, yeah. So if you guys uh, did pick up this uh, special edition magazine, uh, <laughs> the big read did make the cut right here. Yeah, so <laughs> thank you, Cynthia, for that. Um, mm -hmm. Wow, this is so great. Um, I just want to I want to go ahead and talk a little bit more about um, let's talk about the Boat People Memorial. Yes. So uh, here it is located in Westminster. Uh, this is this is a this is a really hard image to to kind of watch just because you're seeing you're seeing a lot of different people like struggling and and I'm just trying to can you explain a little bit more about what this is and why did your parents um choose this right so when my parents were on the boat and they saw people's people dying to them they they just prayed every day, like, just please get us to safety. And we will never forget how grateful we are if we were to get to where we are, which is, mm -hmm. you know, being here in America. And yeah. so they made this promise that, you know, they would never forget all the lives that were lost, seeking freedom, leaving. There's like hundreds and thousands of different boats. It's not just my parents' small boat. So they just mm -hmm. wanted to remember the lives lost. And to them, they thought of like a statue that would represent mm -hmm. what they saw. So here you could see like a son helping his mother and then the daughter's like trying to carry her young child, trying to reach out for anybody who's out there to help them. And mm -hmm. it's just something that my parents just promised that they were to do and then they were able to do so. And they had the opportunity to do it without asking anyone like the cousin, I don't know if you can see in the picture, but there are little stones surrounding the statue. And oh, you can yeah, see like, like on the outside. On the, or, 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 on the outside. Right, yeah. 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 So on each of those rocks, there, there are names of the lives that were lost at sea. So when they first started this, they wanted, they um, advertised a newspaper saying, you know, if you have family members that were lost at sea 
and we that you want to remember them by you could just come and then submit their name and we'll have all their names engraved onto each rock so from all the rocks that we have surrounding the statue there are more than six thousand names on there oh my god yeah and then the sad thing so every april we would have like a little memorial just to remember the lives that were lost and the sad thing is that you could see you know mothers or like children going there and to look for their family members names and then to sit there and then they, they would just like touch it and just you know it would just bring up so many memories of them yeah it's 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 really sad like it's one thing to, to talk about it but but when you're there and witnessing it it's pretty it's heartbreaking but we just wanted to do something where they can go there and then just be at peace with you know their loved ones and to know that they were never forgotten and that you know we're here to remember them especially every year in april yeah no it's um and just to tell, just to remind everyone, you know, the Vietnam War ended on April 30th, 1975, and it lasted for almost 20 years, almost 20 years. So, yeah. Um, and, uh, oh, we have a question that just came up here. Um, so Irving here asks, <laughs> which part of the city is which part of the city is that memorial located at? So the memorial is located uh, in Westminster. And yes, if it's anybody, Beach Boulevard. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if anybody here is familiar with Westminster, you know that is the ultimate hub for all <laughs> Vietnamese Americans or Vietnamese people to hang out at. Um, they call it Little Saigon. So Little yes. Saigon is, oh, man, they have the best Vietnamese food. <laughs> food ever so yeah if you guys are ever swinging by um you know orange county uh westminster like be sure to check out stop at the memorial to just to you know yeah. see and and pay your respects um i think it's important as like second generation vietnamese americans like we you know we, we don't we don't think about it now because we're just like oh we live in america it's, everything's so nice awesome. here you know um but the, the, the sacrifices that our parents, our grandparents, our ancestors made just to, you know, be here, it's or, or just to, you know, it's it's so hard to grasp because you're just like, what? Like, my parents were caught in a war and, and you know, um, what do you say? What do you say to the kids that don't that don't really know anything or don't really understand um, you know what their heritage is is about. I mean, because yeah. there's some yeah. there's some. There's sometimes I meet some kids. And I'm just like they're just like they speak. They're Vietnamese, um, but they're like I don't know. I don't speak Vietnamese. I don't know anything about Vietnamese. I'm like, well, talk to your parents. <laughs> exactly. Like to me, I would encourage them to, you know, have this time, especially when your parents are still here and are still able to remember everything that went on, to sit with them and then ask them what. They went through because i know it's probably not easy for our parents to you know think about all that stuff too because it's hard on them too versus like you know when we talk about it we're like crying already but i can't I imagine them like seeing all the things that they've seen and you know just being there it's just overwhelming but yeah. you have to know where your parents came from and what they went through to understand the sacrifices that they have made for us and i'm so grateful for my family and then i'm so grateful for this country to just you know help like just let us in like let us be here because it, it's like so difficult but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just grateful for the everything and i just want you know kids today to like i encourage them to just talk to your parents ask ask them what it's like growing yeah. up and you know, there are good times too. I'm not saying everything was like, you know, horrific, but you know, just to see how their lives were back then. So to, yeah. to know about them, Yeah, know. no, I a hundred percent agree. Um, someone here wrote a really nice comment. Oh, Thomas wrote, thank you for sharing Cynthia as the memorial your parents made brings back a lot of memories. Aww, so thank you for that. Um, uh, Cynthia, you know, talking, you know, how how much how good is your Vietnamese? <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, I'm I'm grateful that my mom were to like talk to me since I was like at a young age. You know, would talk to me Vietnamese because I think it's great 
having a second language, especially yeah. to, in today, you know? So, yeah. um, but you know, like my, my Vietnamese is not perfect, but I'm sure, you know, people can still understand, understand me when I'm speaking. <laughs> I, I I feel the same. Um, you know, my growing up, my, my my dad was really strict. We were we were we were not allowed to speak English at home. <laughs> and you know, and like, yeah, if I were to speak English with my parents, they would have no idea what I was saying would be yeah. saying anyway. You know, so yeah, I had to be yeah. Japanese. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of weird, um, but I love the fact that you said that your mom always spoke to you in Vietnamese. Because then now that you're able to speak Vietnamese, um, it, it's like you can actually help people. You can actually yeah. like communicate for them and 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 you know help everybody around you that may not know so much English. So um, I love that. Uh, okay, so Cynthia, now we all know at least for me, I'm still trying to come to the realization that you. Uh, were a famous Vietnamese American <laughs> singer. And, you know, it's funny because like when I see, obviously you, you, we grew up as like best friends and all that stuff, but yeah. I see I see you as my friend. I see you as a, someone like, you know, I could talk to you about anything, but um, you know, when we go outside and you go to Orange County and then everyone's like, oh my God, that's Cynthia Thai. And, and how do you say, how do you say your um, your Vietnamese stage name? Uh, thai Yuan Yuan. Oh, okay, Tai Yuan Yuan. Okay, <laughs> so uh, I just want to give everybody a taste here of of what I mean. Uh, you know, <laughs> before we dive in, uh, let's let's go ahead and show them a video of you singing real quick, just to to show them like, hey, this is what Tai Yuan Yuan did <laughs> when she was a kid. All right, let me go. Ahead. <laughs> viết thư xanh gợi đến một người từ khi xa cách lòng nhớ không nguôi em đã viết tên anh vào áo gối đêm đêm riêng bóng đen soi lòng thầm nguyện ước thành đôi đến trọn đời tình ta như đóa hồng thắm ban mai em nhớ tới anh trong từng tiếng nói yêu anh giây phút nào vơi sóng gió không làm uống phai là Oh my gosh, I can't, I don't even remember what year that was. <laughs> okay, so Cynthia, first off, that was so good because it was, it, yeah, like, I'm like, dude, I didn't know you could sing like that. <laughs> but no, seriously, like, um, just watching you sing, especially when I first saw this video, um, it was so nostalgic for me because growing up as a Vietnamese American, every single Vietnamese household and Vietnamese restaurant, you name it, always has music videos right. of Vietnamese singers in the background. Uh, for sure, you got Paris by Night, you got Asia, yeah. you anything you could think of, like yeah. our parents. Sure. <laughs> it, was, yep. it was blasting in the background, so um yeah no that was great and and can you talk a little bit about how you got into the entertainment industry that because it's amazing so the funny thing was that i back in high school i did a little pageant here in rosemead so it's like the la tent festival so okay my mom's like oh you want to do the pageant i'm like okay well i'm not gonna win anyways but okay sure why not kind of thing <laughs> so then i did it and i won and from there, Asia Entertainment contacted me because they were doing this like first time um, show where they had pageant winners from all over the world and to do a show together. And they called me to see if I was interested. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Didn't expect anything of it. And then, um, so when we got there, they are, they're like, okay, so does anybody have a certain talent that you guys would like to share? Because they want to, you know, showcase 
each pageant winners, you know, whatever talent that you have. So I said, well, I think I can kind of sing. I'm not sure if like, you know, I'm like a professional singer over here, but singing, I just love singing so I can give it a try. And um, so I went to the studio and then I recorded a song and they're like, oh, wow, yeah, you can sing. So then it kind of just like, yeah, started from there. And then I just kept singing for them from then on. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. We had a question pop up um, here okay. from Mr. Joseph Spinella. Uh, do you still sing or plan on singing again? Well, currently I'm not singing right now, but I mean, I would love to sing again. You know, I kind of would want to show my daughter what, you know, her mama can do. <laughs> so it would be fun. I mean, I had a great time singing when I was singing with Asia because I feel like I had opportunities to sing with other singers that I looked up to. So it was a it was a great and fun experience and to travel and to do shows and stuff like that. It was pretty it was fun. Wow. And you did all this while, while you were in high school or in high school? No. Yes. And while wow. I was in high school. I know. So when I did like um casino shows, I'm not even like 21 yet. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna come out for the show and I'm gonna go back straight to my room. So it's crazy. I know. It was wild. Yeah. So, um, do you have any favorite performances that you can talk about or, you know, what are some um, of the things that you remember uh, most about your childhood you know, uh, as a singer? One of like my favorite songs that I have to say was um, called Nang Tiu and it was with Go um, Kim An and she was like a well-known singer, especially, you know, with like our parents' generation. Everybody knew yeah. who she was. So when I got a chance to sing with it, it was amazing. And um, it was like a half Vietnamese, half Chinese song because I do sing mm -hmm. Vietnamese as well. So it was one of those things where it's like, okay, one, I get to sing with this really awesome singer that my parents love. And then two, mm -hmm. that song was written by my um, niece's mom's dad. So he was a famous songwriter back in Vietnam too. And then uh, so to be able to incorporate, like have all that, going on into one song, I, like that would be one of my favorite songs ever that I ever recorded for them. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I love that so much. Uh, you, you know, do you, why do you think it is that um, music and singing and songs, it's, why do you think that's so significant to our culture? Like why do, why do Vietnamese people love songs or music so much? Like what is it about it? I'm not sure, you know, that's a good question. I should ask my, my parents that, but, to me, I feel like maybe it just brings them back to the time in Vietnam where everything was peaceful, you know? Like yeah. everything was just okay. This today I'm just gonna hang out with my friends and we're gonna like, eat great food and listen and listen and sing great songs kind of thing. Like that's what I think. That's why we just meaning us, but like our parents or like yeah. our brothers and sisters just love singing because it's just a time where it's just you don't stress out about anything or you don't remember about the bad times you just remember yeah. the happy time yeah. so i mean even us listening to any kind of music it just makes us happy you know like just singing in general it's just oh yeah it just makes me in a good mood so yeah yeah no i i agree i i remember asking my mom like you know because she would listen to like all these songs back then um right. and i don't know if you know it's called galung galung is like yeah, more traditional <laughs> very what? yeah very traditional very traditional and i just couldn't understand it because it was so the tone was so like hard for right. me to, to understand but yeah. i remember asking oh, yeah. my mom like oh why like why do you guys love music so much like why do they always have paris by night in the background <laughs> and, yeah. you know why can't i watch my cartoons and i just remember my mom telling me like you know it reminds me of home it reminds right. me of vietnam because you know here in america you don't really have too much and, right. and 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 starting this new life it's it's hard but i think uh sure. listening to music and what and watching these videos it, it's comforting it brings them a sense of yeah. comfort um yeah. you know of home so I, I i agree with you so much on that um and, and of course like, yeah it's great that like that type of music still exists and it's still very popular you know it's like mm -hmm. like you said it's like it reminds them of home so it's like this um they'll never forget home because yeah. this type of music is here to stay. 
<laughs> yes, I agree. And 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 I think also partially this is why every Vietnamese household also has a karaoke set up with yes. huge speakers and like the lights. It's like I'm just going to say my house, my parents' house, yes. they definitely oh, have so My house, we still have like those, not even like, because now it's like more DVD karaoke, right? We still have legit like the laser discs, okay? Do you remember that? Like the yes. big ones. Oh my God. Yeah. We still have that. And I'm like, mom, you sure you don't want to get rid of this? But it's like, Tara's like, no, we're keeping them. <laughs> okay, fine. <laughs> you can hoard them. But yeah. What? Yeah. Um, are, do your parents still sing like in the house? My, like yeah. my, well, not as often anymore, but yeah. like my mom, yeah. Like when she still go to uh, attend events, her friend's yeah. events, like yeah. MC, she sings still. Yeah, my mom. Yeah, she loves that oh stuff. And then gosh. randomly, when we would be at home and my dad's singing, my husband would be like, what? Is that your dad singing? I have never heard him sing before. Oh, <laughs> man. Just, to hear them yeah. do that. It's just like, oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah, no, Sam. Um, my, my mom, I will see her. I will hear her singing um, her Vietnamese songs oh. every once in a while. And she loves karaoke. Like, will we go to family parties or something she is yep. on the mic like singing i don't understand too much of what she's singing but she's definitely yeah. singing. and and it's kind of surprising i'm like wow mom you're actually a really good singer <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm like wow mom you're a good singer yeah. oh geez um so i mean um you know you're the entertainment industry is that that's like behind you now like you're not doing that anymore what are what is it that you're doing nowadays well, so now I'm just mostly a stay-at-home mom taking care of my two-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. But I do also work part-time for um, my parents' newspaper because, you know, they're getting older and I do want them to retire and not stress too much before retirement. So mm -hmm. I just want to be out here and help them as much as I can. And yeah, just to reassure them that like me, because my brother works here as well. So just to reassure them that, you know, we'll try to keep, this newspaper going as long as we can <laughs> yeah without having uh, to worry too much oh that's 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 really good that's really good i i saw a question here come up um it says from kathy it says will your daughter sing and speak vietnamese too so talking about singing oh yeah my daughter at two she's like holding her microphone like singing her baby sharks or like oh there she is in a, in an alley <laughs> oh it's so cute that's like three generation right there. Yeah. Yeah. So she just really loves singing. So it's just crazy because I mean, my husband's side of the family is like loves to sing too. You know. So it's just crazy. That's like, wait, hey, both of our families. So I'm pretty sure our daughter's going to be in the entertainment business too. I hope so. <laughs> but that's awesome. yeah, it's crazy how she knows that when she's with my mom, she'll speak Vietnamese. But when she's with my husband's family, like she'll speak English. So it's just amazing how kids nowadays know how to distinguish that. She's yeah. two years old, right? <laughs> That's amazing. Her, her, her favorite food is pho and pizza. What do you know? Vietnamese and Italian. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let, let's, let's, uh, let's, Let's pull up the photo of uh, your wedding day real quick. Oh my okay. gosh, look at that. Okay, I, I love your mom, your dad. And then of course we have your husband, Joey. Shout out to Joey and you looking so beautiful. Um, you know, you. I, I'm not, let me ask you this. How, you know, in a lot of traditional Vietnamese families, like they they want you to date your own kind. But how how was it? I mean, obviously, I love your mom and dad. Like, they're so open. They're so great. But <laughs> how, how did like how, how did you feel when you were like, oh, I'm gonna date this non-Vietnamese guy? Like, yeah. did your uh, parents you know, ever you know, have questions about it? They kind of did. They're like, well, because they were just afraid of like the cultural differences. You know what I mean? It's like, and then plus, it's like, okay, well, we're Buddhist, and then you know, going into you know a non-Asian, it's like a different religion. Is that gonna be an issue, kind of thing? Mm -hmm. So yeah. there was like a lot, like not a lot of questions, but my mom was just like a little worried. But I told her that, you know, Joey, I met Joey's family. They're amazing. And I told her, I'm like, look, mom, it's like 2020. It's like things are different now. It's not like back mm -hmm. in the day where, you know, all Asian parents want their kids to marry a Vietnamese doctor or like, you know, stuff like that. It's different. But I told my mom, I was like, I met Joey. He's amazing. He's super nice. And then the most yeah. important thing is that his family. 
like his yeah like how how his family like and then i told him that they're amazing and when my parents got to meet them i know there's like a language barrier between because my mom can speak english but not like you know fluently and then especially yeah. for my dad he's like he knows some english but he just feels like oh it's just, it's just so sad that i can't communicate with joey's parents as much as i wish i could Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's like it works out and they know that, you know, Joey and his parents love me for who I am. And then to them, that's like that's all that matters. And to know that, yeah. you know, I, I'm being taken care of and they don't have yeah. to worry about that stuff, too, because, you know, they they're just always afraid of to them. It's just we're always their baby. Yeah. I don't know. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's like our parents always just think of us as like, oh, but you're our baby. Like, are you going to be OK? I'm like, mom, I'm in my 30s. I'm fine. <laughs> Like it's okay. Yeah. So but they they love Joey. They love his family. So they're really happy for me. And then now I have this little, you know, little Emma. So brings yeah. them much so much joy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh let's uh let's pull up um uh, I wanna pull up the the, the photo of um Oh our... yeah, see Joey there look at like, this. Look, look at yes. you. Shout out to and all of our girlfriends. Yes. Uh, for sure. <laughs> Oh you look goodness. so beautiful. So for anybody here that doesn't know, um, we are wearing traditional Vietnamese um, dresses here. Um, it's called an Ao Yai. And Joey as well is wearing an Ao Yai. <laughs> so I, yeah, I love it. He, he loved wearing that. So I'm like, good for you. Because I was afraid that he's, he's going to be like, well, why do I have to wear this? But he was all about it. No, so, I love Joey so much. Um, how was the shopping experience to buy him an Ao Yai? Because you, I'm sure you had to go we, somewhere. Well, my aunt in Vietnam got it custom made for us. So we got all of our measurements and then she got it made for us in Vietnam and then sent it over and it fits like a glove. Wow, so beautiful. Yeah, yeah I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, yeah, you know, the, the talking about measurements, like, the Ao Yai's, when you wear it, it has to be like fitted. So you cannot gain, you cannot gain weight. <laughs> you cannot gain weight or, or lose too much weight because yeah, it, has to be, it, it has to be like the perfect like niche, like anything loose, like it, it doesn't look good. So yeah. um, um, look like our generation still wears Ao Yai's for the weddings. Oh, yeah. I, I just love that. Cause yeah, I mean, like even for non-Asians, like, when they look at that outfit, they're like, wow, that's beautiful. And then some yeah. are like beautifully made. So yes. I just love how we're still, you know, rocking that outfit. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I'm sure your closet. How many how many Ao Yai's do you have in your closet? I don't even know. There's probably a box. And I'm sure you, <laughs> you've you seen it. <laughs> I, I have a lot too. And I only wear I'm it sure. when my mom or my dad, they invite me to an event like a Vietnamese event because right. my, my dad is also um, a veteran uh, you know so he gets invited to a lot of like these functions yeah. um so when he wants to show me off just because you know I don't have the ring yet so <laughs> I wear it so I can like you know like look my like daughter is single and she's wearing an ao yai okay <laughs> <laughs> oh man I give people the hardest oh. time though um Talk, talking about uh, husbands here, uh, we have a question coming in from Tom. Um, Tom here wrote, does your husband, Joey, speak Vietnamese? <laughs> and if so, did he already know the language or did he learn from you? No, he does not speak Vietnamese. The only thing that he'll say to my mom every time, you know, she brings him like a bowl of flour or something, he's like, I'm a mat. So that's pretty good already. But I must say, he's he's great at holding chopsticks. Like he's pretty good at. It. I'm surprised. He and he learned that before he met me. So that's yeah. Cool. Oh, that's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. No, Joey's great. Um, and and you know what I love about Joey is that he he'll, he'll make an effort to learn the Vietnamese right. language. Um, so yeah, which is awesome. Um, let's talk a little bit more about. Um, your daughter, Emma Rose. So Emma Rose here, half Vietnamese, half Italian. Um, I'm going to tell everybody this. Um, you know, for her first birthday, you you told all of our friends, you said, guys, we're not accepting presents, like physical presents. But what you wanted was donations for right. a bridge, uh, for yeah. a bridge to be built in Vietnam. Um, can you talk, like, here's the photo right here. Can you talk a little bit more about what this is and why you did it? 
Yeah, so um, the temple that we go to has this charity where they would build bridges in um, the cities that needed them most. Like there were there would be parts of towns where kids would be crossing mm -hmm. these rivers to go to school and. You know when you know vietnam it rains all the time so for them to do so it's very difficult and then some yeah. kids even drown from doing so so they started this charity where okay you know they would accept donations and they would, they would build bridges around all these towns and cities yeah so when i heard about that my mom heard about that she mentioned it to me because i mean emma's so loved and she's grateful like she has everything she's she needs already so for her first birthday we decided that okay you know, hey, if anybody wants to get Emma anything, like let's just, you can donate to this charity. Mm -hmm. And then that's what we did. And then we made, we received enough where we were able to build a bridge. And then so, and this is something that's great where not only is she helping the community, but you know, as she gets older and she's she's able to visit Vietnam and let's say come back and visit this bridge, like she can see, you know, what we did for her. And then thanks mm -hmm. to her aunties and uncles and family that helped, yeah, to help make this happen. So it's, I think it's an amazing thing that we were able to do this. And they still, if people want to do this, they're, it's still, um, they're still doing this. So if people are interested, maybe I can get you info on that and you could post it on like later on. But yeah, bridges like this are being built all over still. And it's amazing to see how grateful those people are too. You know, like going grocery shopping can be so much easier for them. Mm -hmm. Not only just kids, but like elders as well, so. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, this is great. No, um, and then of course, um, being that your daughter is, is you know, Vietnamese, Italian, like what do you, what do you hope that she'll gain from understanding her Vietnamese heritage? I just hope that she is like she never forgets where her grandparents or great grandparents came from and remember yeah. how hard it was yeah. for them to, you know, do all these like make all these sacrifices for her mom to be here. Like meaning, you know, me. Because if yeah. my parents didn't do that, they wouldn't even know where I would be at. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I just wanted to never forget her roots and I want her to pass on to her kids what I try to teach her and what my parents try to teach her. And then oh, not only that, like Joey's parents teach her as well. So mm -hmm. yeah, I just hope she is a good person and we just try to do our best for our kids. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I love that. <laughs> and she has such a supportive circle of aunties and uncles well, here to sure. just like. Yeah, I know. Oh definitely. yeah, no, it's great. So um, yeah, she's so lucky. Oh, geez. So, um, you know, let's let's go ahead and move on to something. Um, well, I, I guess I, I want to ask you also, like, you know, seeing your daughter in front of you every day, like, what are the challenges? Like, when do, when when do you feel that it's challenging to try to get her to understand something? I mean, she's only two years old. So, what are what are some of the little things that you're doing every day to to say, oh, like this is part of your heritage, like, don't forget, like, you know, just so other parents at home, they know what to do. Yeah, well, to me, I, I, to me, I just feel like the most important thing is to speak to them in Vietnamese and try to let them understand that it's like, this is part of your life, like, you're gonna, mm -hmm. you're gonna, you know, multiple languages, and then I want her to know that by, it's not easy learning Vietnamese. Yeah. Like I can barely even write in Vietnamese, like, you know, but for her to understand, you know, what's going on and like just the simple things that my mom, cause my mom is the one that speaks to her mostly in Vietnamese, which is mm -hmm. great. Cause, yes. cause I forget to speak to her in Vietnamese. Cause I'm just so used to it's like, okay, Emma, don't do that. But it's just great that my mom's there. And then she's just teaching her the little things. And then sometimes she's even letting her try like all these Vietnamese food that I probably wouldn't even let her try. So, you know, she like, she's experiencing this Vietnamese culture at an early age. Yeah. But the most important yeah. thing is just to speak to them because they're only two, like they, you know, yeah. she doesn't know that much yet, but mm -hmm. to keep in mind that, yeah, I think talking to them in Vietnamese is the most important thing at mm -hmm. an early age. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, I'm gonna speak Vietnamese to her when I see her, okay? Oh, yeah, <laughs> and then maybe sure. in a couple of years when she gets a little older, we can all go to Vietnam together and look at that yes. bridge. <laughs> well, I have never been into Vietnam, so I think that would be a great 
Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Um, let's go ahead and we'll move to a lighter topic. You were just talking about Vietnamese food. Man, I mean, I love Vietnamese food. And Thank is there, you. do you have any favorite dishes that you love eating all the time or something I, that your mom always makes? My favorite thing that I could eat every single day is bún bò eh? Like, I love that. I could eat it every day. Like, I wouldn't even get sick of it. Seriously. And then my mom, my mom and my aunt makes great bún away, so I'm grateful that I can eat that at home all the time. Yeah. But I mean, there's so many restaurants. We live in such a great city that you know Vietnamese food is just anywhere, like everywhere. So we could just yeah. pick up a phone call and like just go pick it up. But yeah, yeah it's my favorite like that. I can't. Wow, that's awesome. What is yours? Uh, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I have too many, but um, because I love and you know this too. Every year for my birthday, I like to do a Vietnamese style, uh, catering Vietnamese food and and Vietnamese themed um birthday. So, um, yeah. I my mom my mom always loves to make bông bao way as well. Yeah. Um, but I I love eating. I mean, I love eating bông bao way. I love eating pho. My mom makes great pho, and I also love this stuff. I don't think my mom can make, but maybe she just doesn't make it a lot. But I love to eat bông chả Hanoi. So, oh yeah, 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 and Ooh, I love my <laughs> bun sale. Oh my gosh! Oh, bun sale! Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> yeah, Vietnamese food is—it's oh, like never, and there's so many amazing yeah. dishes out there. Um, yeah. we we had a, an author the other day. He also spoke about um, you know, eating to uh, was it to call. So oh tic yes! Call, oh, to call is is really traditional, really good. Yeah. Uh, but I notice every Vietnamese family makes it a little differently. Oh, like, what? yeah, so you have your pork and then you have your eggs. Right. Um, but I like my mom, when she makes it, she she's the pork, the eggs, and then she uses yeah. a lot of pineapples. So, oh, it's is your, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When my mom makes it, it's different too. It's, there's like no pineapple in there. Oh, but that's um, interesting. Yeah, yeah, I love pineapple. I even love pineapple on my pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um but yeah where do you have any favorite vietnamese restaurants like for anybody out there that if they want to go try some really good vietnamese food where do you go to get vietnamese food to me well since i like eating bún bò way so much my lately i've been getting bún bò way at this one local place called five star Huế, and then i love it it's like right on Val there's one on valley uh -huh. um in omani and then they just opened one inside the Almani Superstore, like right on um, Rosemead Boulevard. Okay. Kind of by okay. Like the 60 freeway. So oh, yeah, yeah. Opened I know exactly where that's at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then that's been like my go-to spot pretty much recently. But yeah. But other than that, it's like my my mom and my aunt's always cooking stuff at home too. So when I go out to eat, mm -hmm. I try to get non-Vietnamese food since I get Vietnamese food all the time at home. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. Like, I mean, there are like, uh, so many Vietnamese restaurants. Like, I'm not kidding. It's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I always tell people if you want to look for good Vietnamese food, you can find it in the San Gabriel Valley, which is the 626. We call it the 626. Right. We have a few spots out here in Chinatown as well. Um, I mean, there's like two really good spots is um, Tien Hung and we have Pho 87 out here. Um, okay. There's also, yeah, there's also Blossom, which is really good. Um, but yeah, legit Vietnamese food. You can find it. You can find a lot in San Gabriel Valley. But of course, the ultimate place where you go to for everything is Westminster, Little Saigon. <laughs> um then yes. talk about little saigon do you do, you know growing up my parents never called it little saigon every time we when we were kids when i was like a young kid um i mean i was born here too and my dad and mom would take me to um westminster every weekend just because they have friends down there and, and uh um, you know but but they didn't they never called it westminster they called it santana same here <laughs> oh my god the way they say it too right it's exactly like that yeah it's like, okay, this weekend, Monday sent that now, okay? I'm yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> but they're growing up, you're like, oh, why did they say something now? Why didn't they, they just say it's like the Westminster Mall, right? They don't take it to the Westminster oh. Mall. What's the name of the famous Westminster Mall that everyone goes to? Well, no, top. Well, up top. Yeah, that's yeah. the spot. <laughs> that was the spot. Oh my God. We would go in there and then they would have like all these CDs. And do you remember going? <laughs> 
<laughs> I would get the burn CDs. <laughs> yes, with like all those like um like uh those cartoons on there. Like I, oh, yeah. I don't know what that is. Anime, Asian Sailor Asian anime, Asian yeah. Pride, yeah. But, by drawings Asian or whatever. Asian Pride. Yeah, there was a lot of them by this famous artist called Johnny No. He would make yes, all the cute. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I feel like the kids today would have no idea what we're talking about, but no, they don't. Our we're just we're just old. <laughs> Oh man. Um, uh, do, you, do you have, okay, besides like uh, restaurants, uh, do you have a, what's your favorite boba drink? You got a favorite boba drink you like drinking? I, I'm i very simple. I always get like a green tea with boba, but I have, must say, I drink tea, like boba tea, every day. It's like, I can sit here and complain about gas prices, but like, I would have tea. Like, I have tea. <laughs> All right, so addiction, it's horrible, but yeah, you know, just what do you think? It. What do you think it is about the, the teas that's such it's part of our like Asian American culture? Because I, no I love drinking tea myself, seriously. I have no idea, but then I feel like you know, now it's like when I go there, it's not just all Asians buying boba tea now, you yeah. know what I mean? It's like everybody just loves it now, it's like a and then there's one every block, I swear to God. <laughs> yeah. There's a boba yeah. tea shop everywhere. But yeah. yeah, I don't know. I just love it. It's yeah. part of our culture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely part of our culture. Um yeah. geez. I, I know we're I know we're running out of time here. And um I just want to ask, like, you know, if there's any advice that you can give to uh, you know, second gen, third gen. Asian American parents, I mean, Asian American, uh, you know, folks like us, I mean, besides, besides like talking to their parents, like, you know, what are some other ways that they can, or other things that they can do to stay connected to their heritage? Well, I feel like, I mean, there's social media, right? And then there's yeah. um, chat rooms where you can talk about this kind of stuff with other Asian Americans, like, that is our age. And then you can mm -hmm. kind of discuss them what they've been through or like the types of, you know, like you've mentioned before, they're bullying. Like it's not easy growing oh, up. Yeah. Especially if you live in, you know, since I grew up in the 626 area, yeah. I was lucky enough to not really experience that because I had a lot of Asian, you know, Asian mm -hmm. friends and mm -hmm. things, but I can imagine kids growing up in other parts of the States where there's not that many Asian kids. Yeah. But I just want them to understand that. It's like, you know, if you do experience that, you're not alone. It, mm -hmm. it happens. To, yeah. And just because you experience bullying doesn't mean that you should hate your culture. You know, you should yeah. embrace it. Stand up for yourself yeah. and be like, this is who I am. Like, you know, yeah. I'm not going to change just because you don't accept me the way I am. But yeah, just be proud I, of that you're Asian. I love that. I think you brought up a really good point. Um, because like, you know, growing up, I, I think, I don't think you realize like you're Asian until somebody points Make a it comment. out. Yeah, as a, because I, I, you know, as a kid, I, I remember, I mean, I was born here, but because I spoke Vietnamese so much at home and that I went, when I went, started going to school, everyone was like, oh, English is your second language. English is your second language. Or are you a fob? Or like, I would hear those. I'm like, wait a minute, what, what does that mean? Like, I didn't know I was different. Or, um, you know, I, I think you really touched on a really great topic. Um, I hope we can kind of talk about a little bit, you know, with the, the rise in hate crimes happening against the Asian community, um, you know, it's it's always happened. But just yes. the rise in it happening ever since um, the pandemic, like, what do you say to the, or what advice do you have for the people who may be feeling, like, you know, um, complacent or sad or, you know, what are some things that you feel that they can do to, you know, take action against um, hate crimes happening against our community? I feel like they have to speak up because I feel like a lot of times, like in our Asian culture, we we're like very afraid to say certain things yeah. and we're just, you know, everything that we see, we just like, okay, you know, we just put our head down and just walk away. But we should, I mean, I've seen that our communities are actually standing together and speaking up about all these issues. And especially for the media that they, the only reason why we hear more about this stuff is because the media is talking about it. It's just yeah. other if they don't say anything, we wouldn't know, or like um social media. If somebody yeah. didn't stand and record an like an incident, we would never know. So yeah. to me, if, if I were to see someone attacking any Asian, I would say something, even though I might, mm -hmm. you know, 
might put myself in harm's way, but still, like, I don't want that person just to be all by themselves. Yeah. So I feel like we just need to stick together and speak up about these issues and to let people know that it's like, yeah, it's happening. Just because you don't see it personally or in front of you doesn't mean that mm-hmm. it doesn't happen. So. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Speak up, speak up. And then of course, like, you know, talk about it, talk about it with each other and then find your community, find your yes, community that definitely. has your support. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we're, we're running out of time here. It's already two o'clock. Uh, we have one last question. I'm going to take this last question um, coming in from James. James here asks, it's, it's traditional, is traditional Vietnamese home cooking taught and is it passed down to the younger generations? That's a great question. Does your mom teach you how to cook? Yes. So I'm, yeah, I mean, I, to, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm not a great cook here. <laughs> I can bake, but like cooking, yeah, my husband is just, yeah. But yeah, my mom <laughs> is trying to teach me. And then I, I'm trying, it was like one day that my aunt's like, okay, I'm not going to make ban sale for you anymore. Like I'm getting old. So you're, you're going to have to learn how to do it yourself. So then the one time I tried doing it for the whole family and then it didn't turn out that bad. So I'm actually happy. <laughs> That's like a step. <laughs> but yes, definitely. I do want to, you know, I mean, I probably have to write down all the ingredients yeah. and stuff because you know, every Asian family has their own like little ingredient that they put in there. Yeah. So yeah, and they don't do it. measurements. Okay, there's no, no measurements. It's all about asking, tasting. Yes, I was asking. I was like, okay, so how? What do I put in here? How much? She's like, oh, just use your hands. So I'm like, oh my gosh. So I was like, okay. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, hey, sometimes it's like if you don't have the exact measurements, that's what makes it taste good. Yeah, I don't know, it's weird. Yeah. But it, it works for them. So I'm yeah. trying my best. I do want to pass it on to Emma too one day. So yeah, I'm yeah. gonna have more practice over here. Wow. Well, I hope uh, I hope to come over to learn yeah. and to eat some of your bansai, or maybe we can go oh, hit yeah. up that uh, okay, Mumbai like restaurant. restaurant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to try to do it for Friendsgiving, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know what to expect. We have a huge Friendsgiving every year, and it's been happening for the last, like, almost 20 years. So, all yeah. right. Well, Cynthia, I just want to take a moment here to thank you for, you know, joining me and um, here with the Los Angeles having. Public Library. It's been so much fun. Thank you, and thank you for everyone that's tuning in. Yeah, and I hope to, uh, you know, see you soon next week. So uh, thanks, Cynthia, for joining us. If you guys want to follow Cynthia on Instagram and, you know, uh, check out her, what she's been up to, you can follow her at Cynthia. Um, You can also, if you're interested in building a a bridge and finding out how to do that stuff in in, uh, Vietnam, like, please, please, Yeah, I'll post something on that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then of course uh, we look forward to reading the Sagong Times and checking out the Boat People Memorial. And um, yeah, I hope everybody takes the the time to go down to Westminster just to kind of see what the Boat People Memorial is all about. Okay, yes. thanks Cynthia for being with us today. I'll see you really soon. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today for our Big Read program. And don't forget to check out our next Big Read program by visiting lepl.org slash Big Read. We actually have one today at 4 p.m. So (laughs) we're going to be, you know, talking with Los Angeles. And we we have an amazing lineup of presenters and performers talking about Lao culture and sharing stories from the diaspora. And it's streaming live today here on the LA Public Library's YouTube channel. Don't forget to email the Big Read. That's bigread at lapl.org for the survey. Uh, So if you complete the survey, there's a chance for you to win the Best We Can Do book, a copy of that right here. And uh, you'll also get a chance to win a $50 gift card to the library store. The library store is amazing. I, I Every time I go there, I can never get out. <laughs> um, so until next time, we truly appreciate your support. The success of all of our library programs could not happen without viewers like you. So thank you so much. And I'll see you at four o'clock.